Hi, I'm David Liu, uh, reporting here from Melbourne, Australia for RoomNow.com on the Uli 2020 virtual conference, meant to be in Frankfurt, now exists solely online. Um, it's been quite good in Australia logging in um, because it, uh, it kicks off um, the 10 a.m. start, works out to be a 6 p.m. Uh, start for us. So uh, quickly finish off clinic, rush home from work, get a beverage and sit in front of the computer to take in a little bit of the great ULR content that's been on offer. As always, the early arthritis uh, uh, material at ULR is very strong, and uh, there have been two abstracts I'd like to, that, that have been talked about at this meeting, uh, which I'd like to talk to you about. Um, and they regard, uh, firstly, how quickly do we need to see our patients um, in, in clinic? How, how soon after symptoms start? And then the second idea, uh, the second one is about for patients with clinically suspect arthralgias, so CCP positive um, with musculoskeletal systems, symptoms, how quickly do we need to, um, uh, in, in those, or how can we predict who, which of those patients will actually go on to develop inflammatory arthritis? So that first abstract, um, looking at those out, um, outcomes in, in terms of how quickly we need to see patients, uh, comes from combined data from the Leiden and Espoir cohorts, um, both two very strong early arthritis cohorts. Um, and what they looked at is to see um, how much, um, how much we need uh, to follow the ULAR recommendations regarding how quickly to see patients and how that might affect outcomes that we care about, like drug-free remission and, um, and radiographic progression. So uh, the ULAR recommendations, you may or may not be aware, for the ULAR recommendations for early arthritis are quite strict. Uh, they um, require, uh, well, they suggest that patients should be seen with, by a rheumatologist within six weeks of the start of their symptoms, and they should have therapy started um, in the first three months, so in 12 weeks, about 12 weeks. And um, so I, I ran a poll online about this, I think a lot of people like me, uh, definitely me included, struggle to see patients in that time frame because of access issues. We've got a workforce shortage in the United States. We've got a workforce shortage, and certainly got a workforce shortage in Australia. And it's hard to be able to get to see all these patients in the time that we would like. At the same time, does that make a difference for outcomes? Well, um, they looked at uh, um, in this at drug-free remission and at radiographic progression. And what was clear from this was that, in fact, drug-free remission um, uh, actually was better if you could get patients in in, in, that early, in that first six weeks. But radiographic progression, uh, there was no difference between the people who got in, in the first six weeks and between six and 12 weeks. Now, once you go out past 12 weeks, when you go out past the um, therapeutic window of opportunity, then yes, it does have an effect on radiographic progression. And yeah, we should try and get these patients in in the first three months. Um, but we perhaps don't need to be as strict as the ULI recommendations um, uh, imply. Of course, there's a bit to work through and we'd always like more data in that space. The second abstract comes from Leeds, um, from uh, Paul Emery's group, looking at patients with CCP um, po positivity and, and, and musculoskeletal, musculoskeletal symptoms and see which of those patients end up going to develop um, inflammatory arthritis, clinically evident inflammatory arthritis. It's always an important question because we're not great at doing this. These are the patients we think, well, if we're going to try and make those timelines, let's try and pick up when uh, they start having inflammatory arthritis so we can swoop in uh, and, and hit at that point. And we've always, we've been trying to figure out for some time good ways of predicting um, what happens to these patients. And um, I talked last year about some of the, the work from the same group looking at ultrasound and there have been lots of other things um, that, have been, um, tried, that have been attempted in this area. Well, one thing which we haven't talked about as much um, until now has been about patient reported outcomes. What happens if we actually listen to the patient and rely on them to say when they might notice some things going off? Well, um, uh, this study looked at um, very global uh, patient reported outcomes, so um, including um, uh, global pain and um, and, uh, and looking at hack and and looked at these in these patients. And in fact, these uh, actually proceed uh, and went up in the weeks preceding the development of uh, inflammatory arthritis, which is an enticing top prospect because it'd be nice to be able to say to our patients, well, if, if, you're not, if you're feeling more pain, if, if things are getting worse, then that might be a trigger for us to actually examine you and see whether you do have synovitis or not. Now, of course, there's an equipoise required here. There's a balance between um, um, trying to see patients too much and being able to catch um, things on the basis of patient reported outcomes, but certainly it's an enticing prospect which we should, um, and, and which delivers a message that we should put a bit more attention on, which is listen to our patients. 
Uh, I'm David Liu, and for more content, go to roomnow.com.